Are you looking to learn how to become a cloud architect? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs and I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Architects and we're an organization dedicated towards building high performance cloud computing careers. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to become a cloud architect. Every day people ask us how to become a cloud architect and we understand for good reason. A cloud architect is one of the highest paid technology professionals. In fact, the average cloud architect in the US earns over $153,000 per year. And a good cloud architect can easily earn two to three times that, especially if you have the right communication skills and business acumen. So when we talk about the cloud architect career and how to get that first cloud architect job, we're gonna teach you all of the components you need to learn. We're gonna teach you what you need to know on the technical side, we're gonna teach you what you need to know on the communication side, and we're gonna teach you what you need to know on the business side. So this video could really be your cloud architect career development plan. So let's first define the cloud architect job. See, the cloud architect is different than a cloud engineer. The cloud architect is a system designer. This is not a person that's gonna be configuring things. The cloud architect is a system designer. And as a cloud architect, you could work in one or two locations. You could work for a vendor, and we'll talk about that, or you can work for an organization. We're gonna start where what the cloud architect would do for a vendor. For example, AWS, GCP, Microsoft, or any of these organizations. In these organizations, cloud architects are a customer facing role. They are a design role. They are a pre-sales role in many cases, as well as a post-sales role, but these are design roles. And typically speaking, as a cloud architect in one of these organizations, you're gonna meet with the, your customer's executive team, the CEO, the CIO, the CTO, as well as the VP of IT. And then you're also gonna meet the director of IT, the manager of IT, and in many cases, you're also gonna be working with the engineering team. So as a cloud architect, you're gonna be doing a lot of presentations and asking a lot of questions because you need to find the organization's current state of their technology from the current engineers and you also need to find the future state of the business from the company's executives because the technology solution you design as a cloud architect needs to help meet the business's goals, the business's strategy, and it also needs to maintain any business, legal, technical, or regulatory requirements. Now, cloud architects could also work at customer sites, meaning they could be hired by the customer. Say a bank, for example, would hire a cloud architect. The reason these organizations hire cloud architects is they want their own internal cloud architects to work with the cloud architects at the vendors to design the perfect solution for the customer. Customers know that a single cloud may or may not be the right solution and that customers also know that the vendors, it's in their best interest to sell their products. So organizations and big organizations will have their own cloud architects to design the systems for an organization. And of course, these cloud architects will work with the cloud engineering team at the customer site, as well as the cloud architects and cloud engineers at the vendor site. So again, this is a design position. This is not a configuration position. This is not a scripting position. This is a design position and it's a hybrid design slash business position. So if you're going to be able to do systems design, you need to know how the systems work. And it's not just enough to know how an isolated system works. You have to know how all the pieces and parts of the solution fit together. So if you're going to be a cloud architect, you're going to be working with network and data center tools. See, the cloud is nothing more than a virtualized network and a data center. Now there's some advantages to the cloud and there's some disadvantages to the cloud. And as a cloud architect, you need to know what they are because sometimes it's best to stay in the data center. Sometimes it's best to go all into a single cloud. Sometimes it's best to do a hybrid cloud and sometimes it's best to do a multi-cloud. And as a cloud architect, you need to be aware of how to do these things. This is only possible when you understand the network and the data center. So the technologies that you must understand and intimately understand these things to be able to design systems are server virtualization, containers, storage environments, firewalls, IDS, IPS systems, load balancers, everything from networking. Some, some things include IP addressing, routing protocols, especially BGP, DNS, routers and how they work, switches and how they work, and VPN concentrators. These are the main technologies you need to understand as a cloud architect because you're going to be working with them every day. Either you're going to be doing a lift and shift from the data center to the cloud, or you're going to be designing these systems in the cloud, but you need to know how all these pieces and parts work together, and you must know how to optimize the performance of the system as a whole. So 
These are what you need to know as a cloud architect, and of course you need to be aware of the services on your cloud providers. See, if you're dealing, for example, with a concept that I know I need a NoSQL database, all you need to understand is architecturally what that module is. Could you use Apache Cassandra? Sure. Could you use Amazon DynamoDB? Of course you could. Could you use Google Cloud Bigtable? Of course. And as an architect, you just need to know that you need a NoSQL database and why you need that NoSQL database. From there, it's very easy. You just pick the cloud solution that you're looking for. But in order to design a system for a client, you must understand their current state and, their, and how to get them to their goal future state, which is a combination of their business and their technical needs. Now that's only half of it. Now we're gonna talk about the other 50% of what's necessary to become a cloud architect. Since as a cloud architect, you're gonna be designing systems based upon your interactions with executives, as well as management, as well as engineers, you're gonna to have to learn how to communicate to all three because all three levels speak different languages because they all have different goals and different skill sets. So in this section, we're gonna talk about the business acumen first and then the communication skills necessary so you can get that cloud architect job. Beginning with the business skills, you have to understand what expenses actually are to an organization, meaning I need to understand what capital expenses are and how they affect an organization's bottom line and operational expenses and what they are and how they affect an organization's bottom line. Especially when you're dealing with a cloud computing environment, which is gonna migrate people traditionally from the data center, which is high capital expenditures, and move them to the cloud, which is typically high operational expenditures due to the ongoing costs of the paper use model. So you need to be able to do that. And as a cloud architect, you're gonna to need to do some ROI modeling or show the return on investment capital that an organization will receive from your solution. See, as organizations, and for you in your training program, there's the concept of opportunity cost. If an organization does not invest in this, they could invest in something else. And an organization has to select which is the best investment. So if you want customers to use your cloud architecture, your cloud architecture must provide a better ROI or return on investment than competing opportunities. So you need to understand this, which is why it's so essential to get the perspective from the business unit. The executives will tell you exactly what you need to know, what their goals are. Because the CEO is focused on the company's strategy, but the CFO is focused on how to use the organization's financial resources. And the CIO, for example, is focused on executing the CEO's strategy through the use of information technology. And each one of them demands a different message, as does the manager of IT versus the engineer. So you, you need to be able to match your message to the tone. And each one of these, from a business perspective, is gonna care about different things. And that's from the business perspective, meaning the engineers are gonna be concerned about how they build this, and the architects are gonna be concerned how they design it, and we talked about the executives that are be concerning with the strategy of the organization. So now that you know some of the business acumen you need to know, the next thing we need to talk about are communication skills. Communication skills will affect your career as a cloud architect probably more than anything else other than your technical competency. Communication skills will have a direct relationship with regards to your salary and your hireability, and communication skills are super important. So remember that. So when you're building your, your cloud architect career development plan, if tech is 50% and business acumen and communication skills are 50%, make sure you spend at least 50% of your time focusing on the non-tech things if you want a great cloud computing career. So now that we're past the concept of ROI modeling and we're talking about business acumen, let's talk about soft skills. As a cloud architect, you must train empathy emotional intelligence, and how to communicate with others. Now, empathy is the most critical soft skill. Empathy, or the ability to see things from another's perspective, will do wonders for your career. It will help you be more successful delivering projects, it will help you be more successful dealing with management, and it will be help you be more successful dealing with low performers. And as an architect, you're gonna be leading teams, even though you might not be the manager, so your empathy is gonna be essential to your cloud computing career. Now, not just empathy, you need to be emotionally intelligent. You need to be able to take someone that's sad or depressed or frustrated and bring out the best in them so they can keep working on the architecture. Or sometimes in life we all have hard days and we need to be able to raise the energy in the room, manage our own emotions so we don't damage relationships and help manage others' emotions. And that can build deeper relationships and better outcomes. So that is definitely something that's critical is emotional intelligence. Do the research. When you look into emotional intelligence, you will see a direct correlation between higher levels of emotional intelligence, as well as salary, as well as employability and career progression. In fact, individuals with more emotional intelligence than uh, compared to individuals with lower emotional intelligence 
earn typically about $29,600 more per year. And that's just emotional intelligence and that's on average. Now in higher paying careers like tech, especially where they're skewed, it can make a bigger difference to your career. So emotional intelligence is not only critical skill for the cloud architect, it can have a big impact on your salary and your long-term career. So make sure you're training emotional intelligence. Make sure you're training your presentation skills. As a cloud architect, you'll be spending a lot of time presenting. Make sure you train your writing skills. As a cloud architect, you're gonna to have to write for executives, management, and engineers. So you're gonna to have to write at a lot of different levels and you have to be really good at it. And you're gonna to have to learn how to write quickly, succinctly, to the point. You're gonna to have to learn how to describe how the solution works and why you would use it. So today we talked about what it takes to become a cloud architect and how to get your first cloud architect job. I hope you've enjoyed this video and we look forward to producing more videos for you. But let's talk about some free services we do at Go Cloud Architects to help the cloud computing community. Every Monday and every Thursday, we have a free how to get your first cloud architect job webinar. And on this webinar, we talk about exactly what it takes to get hired, what hiring managers desire, what your resume should look like, things that you should train. And we talk about everything that's necessary to help you get your first cloud architect job. And we even do an hour of questions and answers after the one hour discussion that we provide. It's free, we do it on Mondays and Thursdays. Please sign up, the link is in the description below. Every Tuesday, we do a Cloud Architect Experience webinar. And on these webinars, we get you, we teach you what it's like to work as a Cloud Architect. We will give you a presentation and we will talk about some Cloud Computing challenges. And we will ask you how to design a Cloud Architect solution while you're on the call. And we will talk about the kind of background and training that you should receive to have real experience on your resume so you can impress hiring managers and get your first Cloud Architect job. We do that every Tuesday. Now, most Wednesdays, we do a YouTube Live at 9 a.m. Eastern, which equates to uh, 2 p.m. GMT. And when we run these, we let you bring any cloud architect or any cloud computing career questions related to your career. You ask the questions and we will help guide you in the best we can to help you find the best path to get you to your career goals. And we do that completely free every Wednesday to help the community. We also have a free AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate eBook and eCourse. The link is in the description below. And on the week of the 15th to the 20th of June in 2021, we are doing a live stream AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional Live Boot Camp. So you'll be able to ask questions on this live boot camp. If you're watching this after the boot camp has either begun or ended, don't worry. You will be able to see that live boot camp uh, that we've done on YouTube Live. And I will leave the link in the description below so you'll be able to access the playlist for that boot camp so you can have a free AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional training program courtesy of Go Cloud Architects. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in a new video very soon.